Hey and welcome to Never Into the Aragon. So I'd like to go over my Paladin Oathkeeper Healer build. You can see just standing still, my stats are looking like so. I'll go over exactly what stats you want to be focusing on in the stats section. There will be timestamps on the play bar below so you can skip to any part you're most interested in. Now this build should suit you in any content within the game right now. It purely focuses on just maximizing that output in healing. So as a paladin healer, you can give as big a shields as possible. We can see that there's about 80% of our hit points, which is 973k. Before we get started, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of these channel members for the continued support. So the most important section is our powers and how we want to have them set up. So we'll first talk about our mechanics. The most important mechanic is how we actually heal. You can see on the right side there, we have this divinity bar. Whenever we use a power while we're in combat, you'll be able to see those bars much easier. You can see it there on the right side. The left side bar is your shield and we'll go over that in a little bit. But this bar has a total of a thousand points and you can see your different heal powers have a divinity cost. This bar is your divinity and you have a thousand of it. So for example, this divine touch, you'll be able to cast it 10 times before you have no more divinity. And that divinity slowly regenerates back. So you need to find the balance of how much you can heal versus how quickly you can get that divinity back and you will use certain powers to also regenerate back that divinity quicker if of course you go out of combat you gain a significant boost to regenerating it back so next up we have our block mechanic now this is basically an added layer of hit points up to 40 percent of your maximum hit points so we pretty much have another 400k hit points of our shield so we can block incoming hits and take it off that extra layer it will also grant you the effect of a bit of control resistance so you'll be able to avoid getting knocked around the place and stunned and dazed by most attacks there are of course some boss mechanics where they can ignore that immunity from your shield now while in combat you can use this shield to regenerate back your action points to use your daily powers more often and a very neat trick is hold down your outwell attack like valorous strike and just spam your shield button and then you will generate a significant amount more action points i've gone over a command that you can use to automatically do this so you only have to press one button but overall you can very easily do it manually here our tab power is going to be our healer's mark we can see we can use it on ourselves. we can see you get those wings above your head and that means when i use my tab power when i hold it down i will channel and this channel effect is our hand of divinity and this can cost you up to 140 divinity healing for a thousand magnitude so it's our power which can give the biggest amount of shield so keep that in mind and you generally want to have that aura of divinity that mark again on the tank just keep in mind you can only heal them until a range of 120 feet any further away and it's just going to heal yourself or if you have nobody marked it again it's just going to heal yourself We'll start with our at wills and I generally use Valorous Strike just to attack the enemies while you're not actively healing, not casting any other abilities, not avoiding mechanics. And this just allows you to generate action points over time. As my secondary, I run with Cure Wounds, and that's mainly just for a backup heal. If somebody needs a little bit of a top up so that they're full HP, you can just pop a Cure Wounds on them at a small divinity cost, 275 magnitude heal, and that'll top them off. Then we go to our encounter powers, and our primary healing powers are Divine shelter or divine touch now i like to switch between either or depending on what content i'm in if i'm in content like a dungeon where i have five people myself included to heal and we're generally spread out i will use divine touch as my main heal you want to try and just heal one person at a time with this. The area is pretty massive, so it can be quite hard to aim to make sure you only heal, let's say, yourself or your party member and not anybody else, as the heal will be divided up 
by the amount of people in that area. Still helps if you need to heal two people at once, they'll still get a decent heal, but not that great. As soon as you want to heal like four people at once or more, Divine Shelter is better. So if you're in a boss fight where everybody's clumped up and grouped, then definitely switch to Divine Shelter and use this to heal everybody. As our backup and counter powers, I generally run with Sacred Weapon and Circle of Divinity. Sacred Weapon, you can just use it. You don't have to attack and you will gain the passive regeneration of divinity. You will also reduce the damage you take with Enduring Spirit. But keep in mind that's only active for 10 seconds and then you have like a 22 second cooldown. I believe that's normally nearly 30 seconds without any recharge speed. Then we have our Circle of Divinity which you're just going to cast on the ground. It boosts your outgoing healing up you can see by 15% just looking at the power there and that puts us to 85%. Because we're not in a party we miss a bit of outgoing healing but when we're in a party that's then capped with our Circle circle of divinity the uptime on it again isn't 100 percent, so you will save your circle of divinity for when you really need to be healing and otherwise if you're in a trial and it's just opportune to cast it when you need divinity regen don't be afraid to do that but make sure you stand within its area otherwise you won't regenerate any divinity or even gain that buff to your outgoing healing which we may as well make use of and this build does if you're running mob fights where you have lots of enemies and they can be crowd controlled banishment is really good along with burning light since if they're stunned they cannot deal any damage they cannot move and thus there's no need to be doing any healing if the enemies aren't dealing any damage and that can just be even better than healing of course you're going to have one or two ads which are immune to the crowd control effect and they will still do damage so you still want to at least have a backup heal power you can use on everybody basically and our general gist is giving shields so we can have the opportunity of being able to cast our heals when they don't even need it just to make sure everybody has a shield just be warned though you want to balance your divinity rate as you only have a certain pool we move to our daily powers and generally i like to have lay on hands just as that backup heal power you'll immediately heal somebody to full and if you run with this feat you'll give them an additional shield it will stack that shield with your other shields so you can effectively give somebody full amount of shield if you time it right otherwise we're using sanctuary if everybody is again grouped up and if everybody's spread out we're just using shield of faith so mechanics we've already gone over we move to class features and i generally run with composure and then one of the three following auras i will generally if i need to actually be healing a lot run with aura of restoration it just gives everybody extra incoming healing which will increase the size of your shields on them and also of course your heals and in a trial this is really good to also help your other healer help heal as well otherwise if you need a bit more damage in your group aura of wrath is there and then there's aura of protection which i generally just don't use you're better off just increasing the incoming healing they take from you than giving them a teeny bit more deflect chance we move to our feats and of course here we just want critical touch the reason being is that when you cast your encounter power you can see you get this dotted line and that means the next time you cast it you guaranteed get a crit and that crit will then affect everybody you're healing within that one instance the problem with casting an aoe power where you're hitting everybody is that depending on your crit chance one person might get healed for a crit and somebody else not. I just don't find sheltering healing useful at all. Generally not using cure wounds much. Power of Opportunity I find is better than Battle Focus. But if you really need the Divinity Regen, go with it. Power of Opportunity can be a little tricky to remember to actually use. Essentially whenever you use like a heal power, you have a chance that again you get this dotted line around your tab. And when you go and actually use it, it will use zero divinity. So that's like a free big shield on whatever target you have your healer's mark on. It's pretty great. Next set of feats, you definitely just want to go Enduring Spirit. The top feat here, Spirit of Audacity, is just for some hybrid DPS build. Then we have the next pair, and I generally go with Divine Intervention. There is a way you can go with Covalescence, and essentially it's really good for, let's say, some fights where you need a lot of burst heal and you're struggling to heal them as they take lots of damage over time. The way it works is you're gonna be casting Shield of Faith and then instead of shielding, you're just gonna heal them for more. And this is good because instead of, let's say I heal myself, right? I give myself a shield. Instead of casting another power and just replacing that shield, I would heal for more. 
and that can just be better to fill people's HP bars up. We do suffer a bit on trying to output actual heals. And so if they need a lot of healing after taking a big hit, it can be better to have that Coalescence. I just run with Divine Intervention, add a shield effect and lay on hands. Haven't played too much around with Coalescence. You can give it a try and see how it feels for you. Last pair of feats, I go with the Mystery of Warding, simply just to increase the size of our shields. I just don't find Divine Vessel as too useful. It's got a cooldown of three minutes. Otherwise, sure, it's pretty great to have that boost in healing and being able to have a free spam window where it's not going to cost you anything. But just having bigger shields in general can overall just give your party a bit more survivability. So now we move on to our stats. And the buff food I use to actually get these stats up is here, the Wildstorm Elixir, the Flask of Potency, Squash Soup, and I use generally an Invocation Blessing there to get this Critical Severity. Not too needed, but will help a little bit and we can make room of that. On our belts, we're just using a Forger's Box. Haven't got to upgrade to Mythic, but it just guaranteed gives you 3% power on Mythic. And then I'm just using a Wondrous Dragon for the 3% action point gain you can use whatever you want there but then we just use some heal potions just an emergency to make sure we aren't going to go down so when we just stand around our stats look like so without going healing at 70 percent now when we go in combat and when we're healing lots of allies we can get this crit strike easily to 90 percent with this helmet we can see it just gives us one percent critical severity for each target we heal so if there's like nine people there one cast will give you nine stacks and thus you gain nine percent and would be overcapped. You can see just getting one stack just because I'm just healing myself gives us one percent. Then when we're in combat and we're attacking we get the our power up with our potency. We're just attacking here and that potency then procs for us. You can see it in our buff bar and that gives our power near enough to max again upgrading your forger box will give you a little bit more and otherwise i'm really not too fussed about missing a tiny little percentage as for our outgoing healing we can see when we cast our circle of divinity there our outgoing healing again gets boosted to 85 percent and when being in a party we'll get another six percent outgoing healing from here so again we'll be over capped and our stats are looking great what you want to focus on is power and outgoing healing balance them so that they're the same level and just increase both of them together and then you want to focus on in my opinion on a paladin crit severity and then crit strike last it is very nice to have high crit chance just so that your lay on hands will pretty much always be a crit and give a massive shield but with that aside we move on to the gear we want to use again we're just using a bunch of gear from the new dragon hunts the sharp circlet, the superior plate, superior crushers, the serene boots, our Tiamat set just here with the red eyes glare from Voss, the soothsayers from Dragon Hunts, this shirt from your Dragon Blood Veil mini bosses with the outgoing healing, and then these pants from Dragon Hunts with the crit strike. There will be a video linked below that will lead you to where I go over this document I created where I compare all the different healer gear pieces that are in my opinion considered the best that you could be using there's for example there's a few different rings you could be using you could use the glowing restoration ring instead or even the groves crystal tears specifically on a paladin weapon sets i'm generally going with the masterwork ones the ones that give that stronghold bonus to increase your allies outgoing damage by two percent outgoing healing by two percent and also reduces the incoming damage they take by two percent and that stacks up five times if you're in a party with everybody using it that's pretty wonderful and otherwise we don't really need the extra boost you'd get let's say from lionheart so no big deal just running these and buffing if you have any further questions about my gear feel free to leave a comment and i'll get back to you but as for the modifications you can see on our weapons we're running with the of course enhanced cure wounds just to make it 10% more increased heal on it and then for the offhand we're running with recharge speed allows us to cast those counter powers a bit more often to generate more divinity and then just enhanced critical strike just to get that rating up which fits with this build then for our armor you can see we're running with the armor kits here crit severity crit severity crit strike and another crit strike neck waist and rings you can see it's all just awareness there for added survivability there's nothing really other useful that can go here shirt and pants there's nothing useful that can go there right now we move to enchantments and you can see this is my setup just garnets all the way in offense with a garnet in utility you could of course run a jade there instead for a bit more outgoing healing 
But again, I'm already over capped with my circle of divinity, so there's no need and the forte will help cap my crit strike and just give me a bit more divinity regen. Doesn't matter what you run in defense, but ideally you'll have the defensive stat there or awareness here as well. And then for our overloads, we're running with Devil's Precision, just crit strike, and we're running with the White Dragon Glyft. It gives us that additional heal proc on the allies when you're healing, helps a teeny bit really not much combat and champ are running a flash freeze if you're running content don't want to be using scrolls you can definitely just run with a solar shield otherwise bonus enchantment recharge speed artifacts ideally the best scenario is to have three heart artifacts these older heart ones will create a set when you run three of them giving 10 percent recharge speed which again just allow you to cast these encounter powers a bit more often and then we're of course running the tiamat one for my Tiamat set for the extra stat boost. So next up, we go to what race should you choose? My opinion, I go with a Wood Elf. It fits best with my build. I need the crit strike. It gives us dexterity and wisdom, which is also pretty good. And just 20% resistance to slow your movement effects, which can be just a bit annoying. There are other really good alternatives. For example, Azimar, your Dragonborns, including your metallic one. And then, of course, you can run with the buff one, which is the Drow or the Men's and Brands and Renegade. That will just help your party deal a bit more damage and have a bit of mitigation with the Renegade. But we just generally don't attack a whole lot, so it can be a little bit harder for us to proc this. And in my opinion, I just leave it to the tank to apply this, this Dark Fire. So as for our ability scores, like I said, with the Wood Elf, we're going with that Wisdom. And then just stacking our ability scores, we're going with Charisma. For my build, it works. I don't need, again, the Dexterity for the Crit Severity. I totally could and could go with a different Helmet. That could totally be an option. But again, that Charisma is giving me the Forte, which is Divinity Regen. It's extra Crit Strike. And on top of that, we're gaining recharge speed to cast our encounter powers more often, which is the main reason I've taken it. And we can sacrifice a bit of crit severity because this helmet shouldn't give us any problems to keep that crit severity up if we're healing every five to 10 seconds. Next up, we move to companions and you can see the setup I'm running here. Generally, I like to go with an active companion. You can see my stats do not look bad at all popping that forger's box and you can see there our powers going up with that potency and just running a striker companion gives us plenty of options if you're just running casual content just need to keep people healed go with the dedicated squire there are definitely multiple different options you can run with buffing companions like your drids your black death scorpion for the combat advantage especially in tiamat very important healers run it you could even run bruner for the defensive buff then you have like the spine devil for another damage buff or even the succubus or the incubus companion equipment we're running this high item level stuff from crown of caldagon critical avoidance not ideal outgoing healing pretty neat and you can get better gear from sharandar it's just really hard to obtain and really frustrating and annoying going with a mythic companion enchantment here because what else Potency here, Baby Deep Crow here, the Wolf just giving crit severity, the Golden Bullet for the outgoing healing, the Quick Link for crit strike and outgoing healing, and the Compi for the extra power. If you're running in Chult, that'll be awesome to just cap your power without even needing the potency. Moving to our mounts, you can see I'm generally running with a buff combat power. This one is example, the Eclipse Lion. All their alternatives is the inspiration from your Pegasus, either your legendary or your mythic. Or the Tyrannosaurus Rexum, either from the King of Spines, Commander T-Rex, or your Warpainted T-Rex, just to increase everybody's damage. And then there is the Swarm, which I don't have here, which is also really good. Those four, absolutely, you want to be using one of those combat powers. Then we're running with Runic Aura, because why not? Again, our stats don't look bad at all. And just running Runic Aura helps give our party an extra added buff to our, their power and defense, meaning they'll deal more damage and survive a bit better. Our stable is looking like such. We're running with three Gladiator's Guile and two Assassin's Covenant and a Shepherd's Devotion. Now with regards to the insignias, you can see we have a bunch of aggression, brutality, and that I believe is throughout the rest of them. You can see the red ones are aggression and the brown or gold ones are brutality. For our callers, you want to focus on this outgoing healing one and then we're running with this crit severity one. Again, you could switch between crit severity or recharge speed depending if you can cap that or not. We could probably actually switch the crit severity back to recharge speed because we have more than enough crit severity and that would just give us a little bit more 
cooldown reduction on these encounter powers but realistically you won't notice much okay 23 seconds down to 22.2 seconds so not bad at all nearly shaving off a full second 0 0.8 seconds the rest of the colors don't matter whatsoever of course you can run movement speed here instead of incoming healing and that can just be a nice bonus so finally for our boons again just take the power ones just take the crit strike and the crit severity and then for the rest is defensive stats hit points you can take this damage and damage resistance against certain enemy types and absolutely take the movement speed and potentially the control resistance for tier 5 take the outgoing healing for sure and then the recharge speed fits very nicely now there is some bugs with the master boon blessed advantage some effects aren't working on that so personally just go with blessed resilience you'll add everybody's survivability by giving them defense and maximum hit points and also healing their stamina which mainly just affects tanks the most they'll be thankful of that extra stamina regen the guild we're running with the crit strike Revive thickness and then just defense or awareness doesn't really matter here overall that's my build and again you can leave any questions you have in the comments below but we'll just cover my buffs real quick again when we went to the stat section we had our cord storm from wildstorm elixir we had the squash soup and we have the potency you can use an invocation blessing to just get that crit severity even higher you just keep using them and then to you get this righteous spoon and you can see our crit severity 82.3 percent we have three green ratings there pretty nice we're just missing a bunch of outgoing healing but again the stat itself does get capped when we use our circle of divinity along with having the extra bonus six percent from being in a party with this armor so again hopefully this build is somewhat helpful to you guys and i'd like to give a special thank you to all of these channel members for helping me keep my channel going and if i presented this well consider leaving the video a like and if you're new around here consider subscribing i'll see you guys around goodbye for now